In this module, we will cover high frequency ventilation, including oscillatory and jet ventilation. The learning objectives for this module include knowing the indications and techniques for high frequency ventilation, the effects of this ventilation strategy on the respiratory system, and the risks associated with these modalities. This module, in conjunction with other assisted ventilation modules, will help in the planning of ventilation strategies for infants with respiratory failure. High frequency ventilation is defined as any ventilation strategy that uses high rate of breaths, traditionally defined as rates greater than 150 breaths per minute. This high rate results in breaths that are smaller in volume than the dead space in the respiratory and ventilator system. While it may seem unintuitive, consider that animals who pant are able to successfully ventilate via a spontaneous version of this strategy without hypocarbia and syncope. There are two main devices on the market to deliver high frequency ventilation. The oscillator, or high frequency oscillating ventilator, which uses a sinusoidal pressure wave as shown in the diagram in pink, and the jet ventilator, or high frequency jet ventilation, which delivers a pressure wave shaped like spikes as shown in the gray in the diagram. High frequency ventilation has many complex interactions with the airway, but one simplification is to imagine a wave of gas in the airway being pushed forward by the waves being delivered behind it at a high rate by the ventilator. As more and more waves of air push down, the shape of the wave changes, creating flow into and out of the airways. A more complicated view of high frequency ventilation reveals that gas exchange is affected by many different properties. The most proximal alveoli in the respiratory system may experience some bulk flow similar to ventilation provided by conventional ventilators. Asymmetric flow velocity is a large source of gas exchange. This is essentially the simplified example provided in the previous slide. As the flow wave gets distorted, further down the airway it moves, it causes the gas at the center of the wave to flow into the lungs, whereas the gas at the edge of the wave gets slowed by the friction in the walls of the airway and leads to a net flow out of the lungs along the edge of those airways. This will be shown further in another diagram. Taylor dispersion refers to the gaseous mixing at the area of contract between the inflowing and outflowing gases in the airway. Pendulift forces and collateral ventilation are ways in which gas flows between alveoli that are near each other, usually from an alveoli with a short time constant, such as those that fill easier, to those with longer time constants. Molecular diffusion, or fast-moving, highly kinetic gas molecules, is increased by high-frequency ventilation as they create rapid changes in flow. At the smallest level, the movement of the heart increases the mixing of gases within the alveoli. The following slides will provide diagrams to demonstrate these forces. Asymmetric gas flow is otherwise known as convective streaming and is the result of gas waves distorting as it moves down the airway, as described in the simplified version. During inspiration, the gas at the center of the airway moves faster and as a result less, has less friction compared to the gas moving near the airway's outer walls. During exhalation, exiting gas is a flat wave. When the vectors for inhalation and exhalation are combined, a net effect of gas flow is created in the center of the airway moving into the lung and gas at the edge moves outside the lung. This diagram shows the forces and pressure waves for the ventilatory mechanisms. Starting from the left, air entering the most proximal alveoli can be ventilated via bulk flow of gas. In the next section of airways, the asymmetric flow velocities and turbulent flow causing Taylor dispersion are shown. In the most distal alveoli on the right, pendulift and collateral ventilation cause gas flow between closely located alveoli. This diagram shows the forces and pressure waves for the ventilatory mechanisms involved in high frequency ventilation. Gas is thought to move through the airways as a result of both convection and diffusion forces. As a reminder, convection is the large movement of massive particles that is roughly going in the same direction, so bulk flow. Diffusion occurs when single particles move about and transports its momentum and energy to other particles. Starting at the top of the figure, air entering the most proximal alveoli cause bulk flow of gas in and out of the alveoli. In the next section of airways, the asymmetric flow velocities and turbulent flow with Taylor dispersion are shown, and in the most distal alveoli at the bottom, pendulift and collateral ventilation cause ventilation between neighboring alveoli. Cardiogenic mixing and augmented molecular diffusion cause increased mixing within the alveoli. While the physics behind high-frequency ventilation are the same for both the oscillator and jet ventilators, their systems and settings differ. The oscillator is a single ventilator system that uses a continuous pressure and a piston to create the displacement wave of gas. Because of the piston, exhalation is active. 
When the piston oscillates away from the patient, it pulls the air back out for the exhalation. The side effect of the active exhalation is that the system requires a higher PEEP to maintain it. The range of breath rates is larger for the high frequency oscillating ventilator compared to the jet ventilator. It's often expressed in hertz, a measure of the number of breaths per second, as opposed to the rate per minute as used on the jet ventilator. The inspiratory to expiratory ratio is fixed on the oscillator because of the piston, which makes the tidal volume dependent on the dialed frequency. In comparison, the jet ventilator is a two ventilator system with the jet placed in between the patient and the conventional ventilator. The jet itself uses a flow interrupter and a high pressure system to push in a burst of gas on top of the PEEP delivered by the conventional ventilator. This system can also be set up with the conventional ventilator delivering breaths on its own PIP independent of the jet, called a side breath. In this system, the exhalation is passive and dependent on chest recoil. The rate of the jet ventilator is expressed as breath per minute and usually ranges from the two to four hundreds. The inspiratory time is able to be set on the jet ventilator, meaning the I to E ratio is variable. The tidal volume is independent of rate. Both methods of high frequency ventilation have declining amplitude of the pressure wave as they move distally through the airways. In the trachea and proximal airways, a large portion of the pressure is delivered, but as the gas moves into the distal airways and alveoli, this is significantly dampened. The sinusoidal shape of the high frequency oscillating ventilator wave means that the mean airway pressure stays the same and the amplitude decreases, whereas the mean airway pressure decreases with the jet ventilator due to the spiked shape of the pressure waves. As mentioned previously, the jet ventilator can be used in conjunction with the conventional ventilator to provide positive inspiratory pressure breaths. The conventional ventilator provides a baseline peep. It can deliver a conventional breath called a sigh breath. Side breaths are used as a strategy to increase lung recruitment via higher bulk flow than can be traditionally delivered by the jet ventilator. In theory, once the alveoli are opened by the conventional breath, the jet ventilator will work to keep them open. Side breaths are usually set at very low rates, usually single digits, and used for short periods of time to increase inflation on the order of a few hours. The downside of side breaths is they potentially may cause volume trauma, they are usually weaned off as soon as possible. There are no absolute indications for high frequency ventilation. Some providers use it as a means of primary ventilation, whereas others use it more as a rescue strategy if conventional ventilation is not able to achieve adequate gas exchange. The most common indications for jet ventilation are air leak syndromes such as pneumothorax and pulmonary interstitial emphysema. High frequency oscillating ventilation is frequently used for meconium aspiration syndrome. In patients with high intra-abdominal pressure leading to lung compromise, high-frequency ventilation can be used to better maintain lung expansion because the maintenance of a stable PEEP without risking collapse between breaths, as you may occur with the conventional ventilator. Infants with pulmonary hypoplasia may also respond to high-frequency ventilation as they potentially have very stiff lungs that are prone to collapse between conventional ventilator breaths. There are many theoretical benefits of high-frequency ventilation. High frequency may better recruit and maintain FRC using higher mean airway pressure, leading to improved lung compliance, decreased resistance, and improved gas exchange. High frequency ventilation also avoids high lung volumes, potentially preventing overinflation of the more compliant lung units, limiting trauma to the lungs. Similarly, the lower pressure differentials of the small tidal volumes may also decrease volume trauma. The higher PEEP used in high frequency ventilation may help to prevent low lung volumes, reducing areas of atelectasis that could lead to inflammatory responses, as well as shear forces associated with the cyclic opening and closing of alveoli as seen in conventional ventilation. The reduction in pulmonary vascular resistance could also improve cardiac function, though this may be negated by higher PEEP, which could limit venous return to the heart if not carefully titrated. High frequency ventilation requires careful monitoring, including more frequent labs and x-rays to titrate the mean airway pressure and lung expansion appropriately and ensure that there is no hypo or hyperventilation. If the mean airway pressure is allowed to get too high, gas can become trapped and the lung can become hyperinflated. Hyperinflation can in itself cause air leak and impede venous return to the heart, impairing cardiac function. In this module, we reviewed the complex physics of high-frequency ventilation and compared the oscillator with the jet ventilator. We discussed common indications and complications from high-frequency ventilation. This concludes Module 2. Thank you for your attention.
We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.